All right, fishing friends, it is time to make some swim bait heads. You can see here, I've got the new finesse swim bait head from Do It. Also got a few different hook sizes here. All you need to do is thread on the little soft plastic keeper onto the hook like that. Hook it up over the little 90 degree angle deal there. And that's all there is to making these little swim baits. Pretty darn easy. Take these, however many you want to make, load them into your uh, mold just like this. I've got two different sizes there. Get your lead pot ready, melt your lead, pour it in there. Pull it out, it looks like this. Super easy to make. If you're new to jig making, this is a really easy one to do. Cut your lead sprue off there and it is gonna leave a little, uh, what I call a shark fin or a little point there. Instead of grinding it off with a file, I just take the back of my clippers, tamp it down so it's nice and flat and you don't even notice that it's there. Now, when you go ahead and powder paint this, I got uh, a sweet little fluid bed. Gone Fishing with Ed made this for me. He's got the air hose, the aerator little pump here like you'd use on a fish tank. Everything all sent to me, ready to go, he made this. Need to add some paint. I put in some of the go time from do it. Uh, this is some powder paint. It's hard in the regular bottle, but when you put it in this, the fluid bed and add air to it, look at that. It looks just like water. It looks like it turned this powder into a fluid. That's why they call it a fluid bed. You can swirl around there just like liquid in a cup, but super easy. Y'all have seen me, uh, you know, put powder paint on do it heads, you know, the, the jig heads before. Heat up your jig head. I'm just using a heat gun here. Dip it in there once. And with the fluid bed, you get a real thin layer of paint. So I'm going to do two different layers here. This is a swim jig head I had just laying around. That's what it looks like. Super even. It's not gloppy. You're not getting too much on it. So there's a look at the swim bait head there. You can see it's got that nice screw lock keeper. Really like the shape of it too. You know, kind of comes up and over wood and stuff. Really, you could vertical fish this too with that vertical line tie. But as a bank angler, having that screw lock keeper on there coming through all this, that's what it's going to look like. Makes a difference. There's one. Well, well, paddle tail action here. One on the Debo homemade paddle tail. And new finesse swim bait head. Not a toad. That's one on the board. Man, it is scummy, scummy. I'm gonna have to come back here tonight with the frog. All right, little dude. Thanks for eating, Fowler. Right out there, right by that little isolated piece of grassy, mossy, I don't even know what the heck this stuff is. Algae of some sort. Definitely not what I thought when I got to this place. Uh, didn't expect it to be covered. I only brought two things, a little swim bait and these crazy little uh, square things that I made. Uh, sometimes you gotta adjust. We'll see if we can uh, call anything else in. Beautiful cast there, nice and subtle. Mmm. Golly! Came right off that and demolished this thing. Man, I wish I could get to more of this. There are just not many places to hit it from the bank. All right. Two on the little Debo swim bait. Another hungry little pounder. Nothing to write home about, but always fun when you're catching them on your own homeland bait. Man, he might be pound and a half or chunky little guy. Thanks for eating, dude. Look at all that grass, all kinds of stuff out there. Oh, I hate to say it. This is the type of place you need a yak. Slide it in here, go push it around, hit all the outside edges of this vegetation. Oh boy. Maybe I should do it. Maybe I should pull the trigger and get a yak. Nah, probably not. All right, well, there's a look at the one we're fishing today. A little uh, green pumpkinish blue head. I forget what that color is, the powder paint from Do It, but a little red eye on it, some red and black flake in it. Kind of a natural watermelony green pumpkin light coloration to it. And this water's pretty clear, so this is seeming to work out pretty well. Oh, I stopped it right at the edge of that and was just shaking it. Hoping there was something cruising. Oh man, that's what I mean, grass lines, man. Stopped it right at the edge of that and just started shaking it right where I couldn't get it up over that grass. Oh boy, must have been cruising. All right, another one over a pound. Oh, look at that. You know when they're sucking it down like that. 
they are wanting to eat a little swim bait. It's that time, late summer, fall's gonna be here. Another chunky, gosh, a little chunky pound and a quarter. Okay, well, testing for this little Debo swim bait's going good, and this is the, the softer plastic. So far, it's held up well. You can get different types of plastic. The regular, this is the one that's a little bit softer material. A little bit more action to it. This is the Slick Shiner mold from Do It. Really liking that one. And I like the new finesse swim bait heads they have. Have a screw lock uh, plastic keeper. So pulling it through grass and stuff like this, it's not continuously pulling down off the head of the bait. See, bank fishing, you have to think different. In a boat or a yak out there, it'd be a lot easier, right? You could just cast right up to that edge, cast parallel to the edges, whole different game. But from the bank, trying to get over all this, you're at a disadvantage. So trying to think of little ways like that where you can capitalize on a couple more bites, try to catch those fish on the outside of this instead of just reeling it in quick because you don't want to pick stuff off. I mean, coming through stuff like this, you're going to be picking stuff off whether you like it or not. So you might as well stop it at the edge there and shake it and see if you can get a bite or two. Look at how aggressive these bullfrogs are. That's just the tip of my rod. Look at him. Bite your line. Look at him. You didn't know Debo was a frog whisperer, did you? Here we go. Debo the frog whisperer. Watch. Oh, oh. Gotta be quicker than that. Oh, come on, Mr. Wolfro. No. Oh, there we go. That's how you go about hand picking a bullfrog, Debo style. Draw them in with your lure, grab them with the hand. Gosh, they're pretty frogs, aren't they? Get a picture of him. All right, there you go. Catch a frog, hold him right in front of the legs like that. Doesn't hurt him at all. Off he goes. <laughs> well, finally got one after the change was made. Yeah, don't worry folks, this is still Debo's fishing. Absolute monster. Oh, oh. All right, we got stuff starting to come to life. All right, second bite, didn't get him. Go back out there. That was a long, long cast. Couldn't tell if he had it or not. Waited. Probably gave him a little bit too much time. Oh my gosh, that was a toad. Absolute. <laughs> Looked like a chunk anyway. Maybe he wasn't that big. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Definitely not as big as I thought. Man, when he smacked it, I thought it was a toad. All right, well. First one of the night, it might not necessarily be a big frog versus small frog challenge, but at least we got one on the board. Gosh, that's a punk chunky pound and three quarter, probably close to a two. I don't know, maybe not that much. Pound and three quarter, somewhere around in there. Might go two. Good fish. All right, one on the old Hawkeye frog, black and yellow, the larger river to sea frog. Big fan of that one. Man, he must've come up sideways because when he hit it, I thought, oh my gosh. That looks like a toad. But it, it, was a, it was a solid fish. I'll take a bunch of those all night. Ooh, fish just hit my line there. Got him. As soon as I got to that opening where he hit my line. Oh gosh, this is so much fun. Catching them in this thick stuff, wrenching them through there. Love it. Yeah. Looks like old River to Sea Bullywaz doing the work for us. Man, he choked that one. Another chunky little pound and a half for there. We'll take it. That thing. Sir, you wanted that frog, didn't you? Look at that. Another good chunky over a pound and a half. Oh boy, this place looks froggy upon froggy. All right, a little more open over here. Better give the Kara another chance. A little bit more open over here. See if we can pull anything in with the little finesse size Kara over here. Oh, there's one. Oh, missed him. Oh, missed him. 
That's a few good fish I have missed on the Kaara. Gosh, dang it. How, dude? Nope, got it. Oh, gosh. Got him. Got him, got him. Finally one on the Kaara. Jeez, took long enough. And another solid fish. All right. All right. Finally one on the little car and look at that. Frog turned all the way up out of the way. Right through the old mouth. Decently long fish. Not real heavy, but... Or thick. Still a decent little fish. Here we go, we'll take it, long fish. Wonder how much he weighs, let's just check. All right, one pound, 10 ounces, just over pound and a half. All right, dude, we'll take it, long little pound and a half -er. All right, fishing friends, fun day on the water. Now listen, this is what happens when you go to a place, you've got something planned, because when I first went there, I didn't think the pond was gonna be covered with scum. Only had like an hour, 45 minutes. I got out at like noon, like obviously one of the worst times to fish, you know, in the, the late summer months, but ended up catching a few on the paddle tail. And that's the new little uh, swim bait that I made through Do It, the little Slick Shiner mold of theirs. I'll leave that, all the head and everything linked below for Do It if you uh, end up purchasing anything over there and use my link, tell them I sent you. They always appreciate that. I don't get any money back or anything for it, but it just shows them that I sent you. Um, love that little paddle tail. This is definitely gonna be one that I'm using a lot. And look, you can tell just from how soft that plastic is. Durability is not as good on these. I've tried it on some other stuff. Using a super soft plastic, you do give up some durability, but the action of it, man, you can reel this super, super slow and it's so soft. You've seen me use this in a few videos now. And that's that new little finesse swim bait head that I showed you making at the beginning. Super easy if you're just getting into jig making, all you need is the, uh, the hook that little soft plastic keeper, and you can kind of see it through the plastic there a little bit. I don't know how well it shows up, but you screw your soft plastic on and it keeps it on there. That way it's not continuously pulling off or you know pulling down the hook, keeps it right up on there, really nice. So really like that. I like that the head is turned up, comes up over wood and stuff pretty well. Um, also you can use it for you know vertical fishing if you're out in a boat and such, but as a bank angler, love being able to make this stuff and tinker with it. I had a few of these made up, um, ended up switching to this one that's a little bit bigger. The smaller one, I had eyes on it. It's got the sockets there so you can see you can put your little eyes on it. Really cool little mold, but that was just for the first part of the day and the combo on this. Now I wanted to show you this because people talk about throwing light baits and stuff. That was just a little one eighth ounce head. Um, this is a seven foot medium power, fast action, rated for lures a quarter up to three quarters ounce. That's that monster bass lunker stick. Have really liked these. Paired that up with the Tatula 100 reel. Great for casting lighter lures. I was just talking to Somebody, I forget who you were, one of my subscribed fishing friends was asking about um, the Tatula 200, 100, uh, or 150. Said I was looking for something to throw a little bit of smaller stuff. I said they got the Tatulas uh, on sale now, the 100s. He said, perfect, gonna get it, and he really liked it. So that combo, great for doing that type of stuff. I actually just have 12 pound fluorocarbon on there. Once you get that 1 8 ounce head with a little bit of plastic on there, obviously it's, it's heavier than that, but certain reels and certain combos are gonna be better suited for lighter lures. Everything works together. Even if I have a medium power rod and I've got a big 200 size reel on here with 17 pound line, it's gonna be hard as heck to cast that. So I need to get back into doing some of the old rod reel line relationship videos where I talked about you know, how the hook plays in with the rod, the reel, the line, how everything works as a system. Now, after getting to the place to fish, I realized, listen, I am burning my tires here. I only brought uh, like a wacky rig, a swim bait and something else. I thought the pond was gonna be completely open, but as you can see, it was filled mostly with a whole bunch of slimy, crusty algae. This still has crap on it from being out there that night. Look at that. Ugh, all that stuff, gross. Anyway, went back out that night with a couple hours to fish with the frogs. Got the frogs already because listen, when you've got that much scum and such, you gotta fish the frog. Right off, I caught a couple on the river to see Bullywa too. Call that the Hawkeye frog because it's black and gold. Go Hawks. But love the little uh, River to Sea Bullywa two frogs. I like the bigger size. They have a smaller one. I think this is the 60, 65 and the 55. Again, I'll leave everything linked below. Oh, and on the Monster Bass uh, rods, 
All these, every one I was using was the Monster Bass Lunker Stick that night. I do have 25% over, 25 off over at Monster Bass um, for anything in store. So the rods, any single lures and stuff. It doesn't work on the subscriptions, but I don't know how long they're going to let me have that. Um, that's to help with the shipping and stuff on the rods. Uh, so go check those out while I still have that percentage off. Like I said, I don't know how long that will last. Probably be going away here sometime, but I really like the rods. I will do a, a review on that, but... Love the little frog, River to Sea Bully Waff. If you haven't thrown it, it's awesome. Throwing that on 65 pound suffix 832. Excellent braid out there. I have never had issues with mine breaking. You can tell it's kind of got the like the dark green and then like the lines in it. That's how you can tell that suffix. It's got like a Gore-Tex fiber or something weaved into it. That's the Revo SX Rocket. I need to do a review on these. I've got a few different Revos I've been playing with. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that the Revos, they came out with a larger, longer handle knobs. Look at that, two inches. That's two-thirds of a Debo finger there, two inches, and I freaking love the feel of these in hand. It gives you enough knob to actually grab onto. Um, have really liked the new Abu Garcia Revo series that they come out with. That's the SX, but the faster version, it's a 9.0 to 1, the rocket version of it. And as you saw, later in the night, uh, I tried switching over to the Jack Care. I was getting lots of blow-ups, man. They were just not like... 100% on, so I switched over to this frog. So you can see the size difference there. The River to Sea Bullywa 2, the bigger version versus that smaller Jackal Kara frog. Definitely a different size profile look to these. So I thought, okay, maybe switch into this smaller guy. Maybe I'll get some more bites. It was kind of the same thing, and I like the frog a lot. Hooks are already turned up. You can see they're already pointed up in the air. Body's nice and soft, and when you do get a bite or you do get a, you know, a fish on, the body can turn out of the way and the hooks can be up there. I feel like that helps the hookup ratio. I mean, I still had a bunch of blow-ups where I didn't connect, but on some of those, you can see it looked like I was swinging a, a stick in the Amazon jungle trying to connect and, you know, hitting cattails and stuff. So I'm sure that had something to do with it, but I definitely like that little frog. And this one, I wanted to put the, the spider wire Dura braid that came out. I tried it for finesse, didn't like it at all. This is the 50 pound, and I have not had a break-off issue on this one yet. You saw me using this um, earlier in the year, a couple other frogging sessions. Have not had any break-offs. It is held strong. Now, this one, because it's my finesse frog setup, this one is a 7.4 medium heavy moderate fast rated for lures up to one ounce this frog and set up the the one with the larger frog is a seven foot four heavy fast rated for lures up to an ounce and a half this one also running abu garcia on it this is the abu garcia revo rocket 10.1 to one and brings in what 44 inches of line is it a bit overkill yeah probably i mean my favorite is like a seven speed overall you can do basically anything with a seven speed reel but this certainly does allow you to cast it out there and bring it back in super quick when you're not getting bites in between. So I've liked the reel, you know, people talk about, you know, if you go higher in speed, you're losing torque, you're losing power. When you're in that thick of stuff anyway, you're not gonna just be reeling through it. I mean, you're gonna have to pull, reel a little bit, pull. As long as you're keeping tension on the line and the rod the whole time, you're okay. So I don't know, I go back and forth on, on fast reels, but yeah, I don't know. Anyway, the Revo series, I've really liked the reels that Abu came out with. I think they did a good job um, upgrading some stuff on it. A little bit different palm ability, some other stuff on it. There's some things that I don't like, but we'll get into that more in a video. Otherwise, overall, really, really like the combo. Extremely comfortable in hand, and it has to come down to that. It has to come down to where I can hold this comfortably all night and fish it, because it could be a $2,000 combo, and if it hurts your hand to hold it, or it's not comfortable, or it feels off, you're not going to want to fish it. All right, folks, so moral of the story is, listen, a place, a pond, a lake, a, a river, they can all change from one time you go there earlier in the year to later in the year or year to year. You might fish it this year and it's completely clear the entire year. You go there next year and it's overrun with vegetation. Places can change. You have to be willing to adapt. I went there first thinking I could try some finesse swim baits and a wacky rig and catch them. Got there and I was like, holy crap, I did not expect this much moss. Came back later with a frog and ended up finding a few more. So be willing to adapt in bass fishing. Give the fish what they want. Don't be stubborn and keep fishing what you want. All right, tonight's subscribe fish and friend, Gone Fishing with Ed. You saw that he made the fluid bed for the, the powder paint for me, which is super neat, really cool. I'm actually going to have Ed on this Saturday night, so make sure you tune in. He's going to be joining us for a live. We're going to talk fishing, bait making, all that. Just having a good time, talking, fishing, hanging out. I appreciate everybody that watches the videos, hangs with us on the lives. Um, if it wasn't for you all, I would not still be doing this. So thank you all. Love you all. I need to edit. Thanks for watching. Till next time.